quite interested in this episode's film, to be honest, and the main reason for that being that it will be the most recent film I've ever discussed on the channel. Uh, feature film, anyway. The, um, the title of that beforehand go into 2006's Summer of the Massacre, a terrible, terrible film which I discussed in the uh, Dead of Night collection series that I reviewed. But this episode, we're looking at spine number 17, we're looking at Viva, which is a 2007 American sex comedy in the style of an old 70s uh, sexploitation film. This is starring, written by and directed by Anna Biller, who this is her first feature uh, debut, but she'd done a lot of shorts from the 90s onwards, and before that she'd done stuff in theatre. Seems that she's quite an outspoken feminist as well, uh, themes of which are usually mirrored in her films. Also seems she can be a little bit controversial on Twitter. So it's going to be weird because recently we've watched a lot of 70s and 80s Italian films. So hopefully something from post Y2K will actually be a little bit refreshing. Or we're going to find ourselves pining for the old days. Annabella's got that many credits in this film that I'm kind of concerned she's just going to be another Tommy Wiseau type. Concerned? Or maybe I'm looking forward to that. Who knows? Let's have a look, shall we? <laughs> Last night, honey? Remember what we did? <laughs> you little hussy. That's what I like about you. We have a great sex life, don't we, honey? <laughs> oh, hi, Reeves. I'm in the middle of a hair session. Uh, I just came to borrow a cup of sugar. OK. Come on into the kitchen. The film follows Barbie. A bored 70s housewife who's sick of being stuck inside all the time and wants to get out and live a little. After an argument with her husband, her and her neighbour set out to express a little bit of sexiness, but they wind up being entangled with a weird agency that hooks them up with men for, uh, like, nudist beaches and orgies. Have they gone a little bit too far? Maybe. A parody slash homage of the sexploitation films of the 70s, I can see what it's trying to do, but a lot of the time, it does just feel like it's focusing too much on, like, set bad 70s pornos. Also, this film is two hours long, and it doesn't need to be. His name is Clyde, and he's an artist. Like the way I smell? <laughs> hey, lay off. That's my woman. Lighten up, Rick. It was just a... So for this section, I want to start with the bits that I liked. The good, I guess. Um, firstly, it really looks the part. It's got bright colours and it all really pops and it's saturated to the nth degree to sort of emulate that Technicolor style of film and it really works. As do the costumes, the, they all feel very time appropriate and there's a wide range on display here, really cool to see. Same with the sets as well. Apparently she was inspired by um, old Playboy comics and 70s decorating magazines, and you can really tell because they all feel very authentic um, and there's plenty to see, it looks really good. Um, outside of how the film's made, there's not much by way of like, creativity I guess, it doesn't really go crazy or anything, outside of a very small animated segment which I massively appreciated, I wanted a little more of it though it's quite short. And lastly for this section, some of the side characters are pretty damn funny. Um, while the humour, I'll talk about the humour a little bit in a, like, a little bit later, but some of these quick cutaways to these side characters did have me laughing. A few examples, um, just a quick cut to a girl combing another girl's pubes made me laugh quite a bit, as did uh, a guy aggressively and erotically eating sugar. Uh, pretty funny stuff, really, with these little side character bits. Um, that's it for the bits that I liked, really. Uh, move on to the bad, I guess. How is he, Doctor? Mrs. Smith, 
It seems that he worked himself into a state of hysteria when you didn't come home last night. He had a seizure, which led to a high fever, followed by pneumonia. Okay, so, now for the stuff I didn't particularly like, the bad of this film. I want to start, though, with the acting. Now, this film is emulating a low-budget 70s exploitation film. Those films are notorious for hiring people who have the look, but don't necessarily have the talent. Uh, I get that, so the acting is intentionally bad in this film. Now, my problem is, is that I feel like it's using that as a crutch and covering up genuinely bad acting. This is the thing with parodies and stuff like that. It It's hard to properly criticise something that is taking the piss, basically, because it can always fall back onto, oh yeah, it's intentional, it's the joke. I get the joke. But I do think that it's getting away with more than it deserves to. Also... This film has a tendency of laughing at its own jokes far too much. It's kind of hard to explain. Uh, a good example of this, though, is in the first few minutes of this film. Um, so a dude is presented a whiskey by his wife for breakfast. That in and of itself, amusing, quite funny. They drank a lot in the 70s, I get it, I get it. The problem is, is that after he's handed this whiskey, he then proceeds to maniacally laugh with his wife. They both just laugh to camera about the fact that he's drinking whiskey for breakfast. Now, I don't know. I, it, it ruined the humour to a point for me and made it, made it absurd but also obnoxious because the film isn't trusting me enough. To, let, to allow me to understand the joke for myself and it's basically like this is the joke, you laugh at the joke now they're drinking whiskey for breakfast, you laugh at it and it, don't do that, just let me laugh and they do it throughout the whole film as well Ugh. the humour itself as well, I didn't particularly find that great I feel like they have two or three jokes in this film and then they just run them to death over the two hour runtime. Uh, it's mostly just, they drank a lot in the 70s, didn't they? They were sexist in the 70s, weren't they? They were, yeah, you don't need to make the joke again an hour and 40 into a film that you, the same joke that you were making in the first five minutes. I don't know, I, either way, I didn't find myself laughing a whole lot throughout. And that's another thing as well, as I've already said, two hours, that runtime is ridiculous for this film. This would have made a fantastic hour and twenty little comedy, but by that hour forty mark, oof, I was exhausted. I was exhausted. Um, I think that that is about it for the stuff that I actively disliked. One more thing, I've just remembered. This isn't even this isn't even what I've written down. This is off the top of my head. This muse. This is a musical. This is a, there's five songs in this film and I didn't care for any of them. The first song comes in about an hour into the film and then they just cram five songs. They're only short, don't get me wrong, they're not massive, but they don't really add anything and I'm not someone who dislikes musicals. I don't dislike musicals, I quite like them, but I don't think that they added anything to this apart from padding out that runtime, really. I'd forgot about that, glad I remembered. Um, yeah, that's that's the stuff I didn't I really actively didn't like about the film. Did <laughs> <laughs> a bachelor's life. <laughs> 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 What's so funny? Outside of the good and the bad, what else does this film do then? Nudity. A lot of nudity. It's going to be very hard to uh, get clips for this, really. 
because there's so much nudity in this film. But, just nudity. There's not really much sex in it. Now, it does sort of tie into the character's arc, I guess, that, that, that there is a purpose, but for a parody of a sexploitation film, I did expect a little bit more. But it's not a complaint, I'm not complaining, just something that I merely observed. Uh, also, the plot is a little thin. Again, though, it's parody. It's this is the this is the problem with talking about things that are parody. You, everything everything can be boiled down to it's justified because it's the joke. I get it. The plot is still a little bit thin, though, which does make the film itself drag a little bit. And strangely enough, just like from reading the back, I was instantly reminded of uh, Belle de Jour by uh, Bunuel. Um, kind of a kind of a similar plot, although Bunuel's is played straight, obviously. Um, yeah, again, I don't really know why I'm mentioning that. Just something I, f I found a little bit interesting, anyway. <laughs> Being a more modern film, the print for this is obviously pretty decent. Uh, looks great, colours really pop and the sound's really good, not really many issues here. Although I did notice in the background of one shot there was a persistent high-pitched hiss, which was irritating to say the least, and there was a shot where the quality just sort of takes a bit of a nosedive, but it's, it's only a short one. I don't know if that's like an added scene, because this is the director's edition. I don't know if it's an issue with the mastering or an issue with the original print or what, but these things are only short and minor and it, they're not enough to ruin the film for me, it was fine. On the disc, pre-menu trailers, we get a trailer for a film that hasn't been put out on Shameless Blu-ray yet, and I'm wondering if it's a hint. It's The Nurse with Ursula Andress. Could be a hint for a Blu-ray, or they could just be advertising the DVD edition that they've got out. Hmm, interesting. Now actually on the disc itself, we get behind the scenes featurette, we get a trailer for Viva, we get a photo gallery, we get audio commentary with, oh my gosh, I can't remember her name, with, what is her name, uh, Heather Drain who appears to be some sort of film writer, critic, don't know, don't care. And that's it for the features. Um, to be honest, with this being a director's edition, I, I expected it to have a little bit more on here, but I guess there's a few bits, I don't know. Sort of middling as a release goes. <laughs> Okay, time for the case, and it all seems like it's written pretty well here. This is a bit of a different one to usual, as uh, this one has a slipcase. Uh, the only other one that should have had a slipcase is Mountain of the Cannibal God, which should have had like a smaller O card, but mine didn't come with that unfortunately. So this is the first one we're discussing on here with an actual functional slipcase. And the way that they've done it is a bit interesting, as the blurb is only on the back of the slipcase with the inner sleeve having like a director's statement. It's an interesting way of doing it, but if this slipcase ever gets lost, there's not going to be a blurb that's readable on the case. But all the information seems correct as well, runtime and all that, all pretty good. Uh, the slip cover is decent, um, looks nice, uh, it's got some cool design for it, and it also gives the film three different covers. Now unfortunately all of these are sort of similar, but they're all fine. I also like that the slipcover's yellow to match with the others in the collection as well. Because they could have just done a daft thing with the, like they do with the special editions and made it grey or some stupid colour, but yellow, pretty decent. This is of course a numbered version. I have number 0832, a much smaller number than we're used to seeing on here. Overall, then, 
I wouldn't say that I hated it, but I wasn't the biggest fan. There are a few things to like here, some side characters made me laugh, it looks the part, but unfortunately it's a little overly long and one note. Recommendation wise, I'd say if you are going to watch it, make sure you're watching it in a group of friends, maybe with a few drinks, as you'll probably get more out of it if you're having a laugh with people as opposed to just paying attention to it. I watched this with my partner, and I think the most fun we got out of this was when we were just laughing and making silly comments about the film, as opposed to seriously just sat there watching it in silence. If you are in the market for it, the shameless print is pretty damn good. This is probably the way to go in the UK, and you get a couple extras as well. Not bad at all, really, uh, release-wise. So, it was fine, just a fine one this episode. I think it's time to get back to what we know best though. Back to the past and back to Italy. That's right, we're going to be looking next episode at a film by our good old friend Lucio Fulcher. We're looking at The Psychic. Love that cover. Mm -hmm.